Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be going over our selections for this uh, Circa Millions Week 5, and we're going to review our results from Week 4. And again, this is not your typical just who I like against the spread thing. This is, again, completely our approach to beating this contest. Um, and as I've gone over in many videos before, we are not the slightest bit interested in figuring out who's going to beat the spread. The the assumption is that all of these lines are rather pure. And since this is a contest, just who does better than everybody else, the trick is completely to figure out who's everybody is playing and then go against them. Um, uh, now, we've tested several theories going into this season and so far so good for the most part. Uh, again, try to put out of your head this idea of who you like. Okay. put into your head this idea of what other people are likely to pick, what types of teams people are likely to play. Um, and we, we have these theories going into the season that those teams are, number one, people like to play home teams. They like to pick, play favorites. They like to play teams that just have a good reputation in general for being like winners, whatever that means. Um, they like playing teams with good quarterbacks, whatever that means. Um, and they like to play spreads that are, uh, you know, within those key numbers, like two and a half point favorites, six and a half point favorites. They don't want to play the three and a half because they think it's always going to land on three. They don't want to play the seven and a half because they think it's going to land on seven. Um, if you know they were going to play underdogs, then they prefer to play home underdogs and they want to get that three and a half and they get that seven and a half. Now, these were the theories going into it. And. For the most part, we've been okay. The one thing that we've been kind of wrong about is this six and a half point spread business. Okay. We I really thought that more people would be taking these six and a half point favorites and fading the six and a half point underdogs, but that doesn't seem to be the case. But what has been very relevant is just the idea that people just hate picking bad teams and love picking good teams. Okay. And those are the low owned spots to look for. You want to find the teams that just have the reputation for being bad, whatever that means, and to fade the teams that have the reputation for being good, whatever that means, and still looking for those correct point spreads, but that's not as important. The other thing we are going to continue to, to focus in on are these, uh, are to avoid the pushes, okay? Um, because like anything on three or seven, a push in this does nothing. Now, Again, the way we look at results is not based on how we do, but just not based on how much leverage we got. Turns out, I think we went two and three or three and two, and we're pretty much out of the running uh, for the for the whole prize for the season. But what happens is that after every four weeks, there's a new quarter that they pay out for. And so starting with week five, we have another you know four or five week stretch where we can win like six figures. So we're going to continue to focus and learn and try again to get low owned plays. Now, this is these were the results from last week. And we were 100% right on with like several spots. So the first thing I noticed is that nobody plays this the Thursday night game. So I knew that I had to play someone with Lions Packers as we, were, we went over last week. And I picked the Packers. I figured they would be the lowest owned. And it turns out they were literally the lowest owned team on the entire board. They lost, but that's not even relevant. Um, so this was extremely strong that we were able to come up with that. Um, we played the Broncos. We just figured that no one would play like the worst team in football as a three and a half point road favorite. Um, so we were, that was pretty good. Only 512 people took them. So that was strong. I mean, they ended up not covering, but who cares? That's not what we're after. Um, we also went and took the Texans, which was extremely strong. You know, only 500 people took them. They ended up winning, but again, I don't care about that either. Um, what else did we end up doing? We ended up taking the, we didn't, we almost took the Cardinals, okay? But again, that 14 point spread was a push and we, I didn't really like that. Um, but it turns out that would have been, again, a very, very low on play. And then I did think we took the Jets in the end and that was kind of stupid, okay? Because I keep forgetting the New York teams people like to play as well. But nonetheless, we seem to be right on top of what we're trying to accomplish here. Oh, no, I know we took, we took the commanders, which was extremely strong. 
Um, we didn't care too much about the eight points. Uh, again, normally we wouldn't, you know, take the eight points. We'd rather take the six and a half. But the commander still had this reputation for just being bad. And the Eagles had the reputation for just being good. And as you can see, the commanders got almost no ownership. So we're really doing well as far as this, uh, this analysis goes. So we're going to try to keep this up for this week. So the first thing that we have to look at is the Thursday game. Because again, Thursday is just very low owned. And so we're just going to have to take a shot. Um, the uh, I go both ways here. One is that the commanders still, people just don't like playing. Um, but the Bears just did give up a 28 point lead. Uh, they have, you know, four defensive backs out. I just can't imagine anybody playing them. So we are going to take the Bears plus the six. Um, however, this, this this push thing concerns me. And if I get five other teams that I think could possibly be lower owned, I'm going to take it. But I don't think I can come up with like a lower owned spot than a Thursday. Now let's take a look. Uh, Bills minus five against the Jaguars. I mean, this looks good to me, right? I mean, the Bills are coming off a of 40. They just throttled the Dolphins. And they're only laying five to Jacksonville. I mean, that seems like pretty easy money to me. So Jacksonville looks pretty strong. Falcons, Texans, not, not really. I think public's equally on both of them. Lions, 10 over the Panthers. That 10 points right on the push line. Not too interested. The Titans are a one-and-a-half point favorite over the Colts. This one kind of confuses me a little bit. Um, I don't. I can't imagine why the Colts would be a one and a half point underdog. So I think that this game is probably just kind of even on both sides. Probably avoid that. All right, Dolphins minus eleven and a half over the Giants. Um, you know the Giants are just freaking hopeless. They just got throttled every week, and they just you know they're just completely bad. So we're going to probably have to take them plus the eleven. And a half. Um, we'll move on. Patriots Saints. If anything here, I'd probably bet the over because it's just obvious that both teams just can't really do anything defend offensively. But I think that, again, you can't really ever play Belichick. He's just like they, they people love playing the Pats. If anything, I would probably try the Saints, but the Patriots are coming off a 40-point loss. So uh, I, I can't imagine the Saints being that popular. Uh, the, uh, whatchamacallit, the uh, – the Saints being that great a play. I think people are going to play the Saints because of the Patriots, you know, their last game. Uh, cannot play the Steelers. Steelers are the most owned team in all of sports. We found that out the hard way. If anything, ooh, we take the Ravens on the road in that Pittsburgh culture that everybody just loves. Pittsburgh at home and people are going to play them. Yeah, I think the Ravens minus the four on the road. That could be interesting. Boy, I wish it wouldn't almost on this push number. Cardinals, Bengals, three right on the number. Can't do it. Look at all these pushes here. Eagles, Rams, that four, it just kind of bothers me. Um, okay, uh, Broncos against the Jets. The Jets are coming off a pretty, pretty good performance against uh, the KC. But I still think that uh, the Broncos are at home, people are going to play them. So I think we have to pass this one. Chiefs minus four on the road against the Vikings. Again, the Chiefs had that scare this past week. So I don't think the people were really going to go back to them. So this is going to be probably a pretty evenly spread out game. Uh, Raiders against, excuse me, uh, Cowboys against the Niners. All right. People love playing the Cowboys. You can get the Cowboys plus three and a half. Um, people really going to lay three and a half with the Niners? I mean, they might. We'll put them in as a possible. But we'll get back to that. And Packers at Raiders. I mean, I the Raiders, a one-point underdog, and the Packers just got throttled. I uh, mean, maybe they get throttled, but how are the Packers a one-point favorite over anybody on the road? Um, we'll we'll try. It. So what we're looking at here is one, two, three, four, five, six candidate plays. We got to kind of organize them. I guess the one that you have to play is the Jaguars. 
There's literally nothing bad about that. The push line is not a big deal. It's the eh, okay team against a really good team. Only five points. I like that. The Dolphins, even though they lost to the Bills, they're, they're still like one game removed from a 70-point performance. And uh, the Giants are just hopeless. So we'll take the 11 and a half there. Ravens against the most popular team on the board, as they always are. Um, we'll lay the four on the road. The Niners one bothers me a little bit just because, I mean, they are like a really, really good team. Um, I think people are going to play them a little bit. So I guess it's the Packers. So it's Bears, Jaguars, Giants, Ravens, Packers. Maybe. Jaguars for sure. Bears for sure. Giants. Maybe the Saints. Maybe the Saints are in play here. Who would be my favorite? I know I already picked five. Just give me a break here. Yeah, we just can't. I don't think we could play the Niners. They're just too popular in general. They're they're always they're always played. Packers Raiders. This seems kind of weird. Okay, I think we should just stick with this. Bears, Jaguars, Giants, Saints, Ravens. I think these are going to be five low owned teams, and that's all we can ask for. And I'll tell you this: the Commanders is trending six and a half. I think. Um, and this this brings up actually an interesting point. Like if this does go up at six and a half, should we be playing this negative line value here? Um, my friend would tell me that CLV is just something you really shouldn't fade. But when you need to beat like so many people, that's, I don't know. It's a good question. I definitely have to play one of these, either Bears or Commanders, but I think we'll just play the Bears. Oh, six. Yeah, Bears, Jaguars, Giants, Saints, and Ravens. Save these here. Saved. And uh, good luck, everybody.